How's everyone feeling? Say again. Low blood sugar. Okay, well, there are snacks in the break straight after this, so we can fix that. And then you can fix it with uh, alcohol after that. Ready to go? Okay. Let's get a big round of applause for Rick then. Thanks, guys. So today we're going to talk about how to build a network analysis stack with Nornir, Napalm, and Pandas. So the agenda is going to be a quick introduction about myself, what we're going to do. We're going to look at um, uh, the aim of today's talk. We're going to then break down each, each of the components within the, uh, this stack. So we're going to look at Napalm, Nornir, Pandas individually. And then we're going to do an end-to-end -end demo if uh, the, the demo gods are on my side. Cool, so a quick intro about myself. I'm Rick Donato, a founder of Packet Coders, which is a network automation learning platform. Um, we do all of that good stuff, but that's not really what I want to talk about. This is what I want to talk about today, which is we're going to build this stack, which is important for many, many reasons. So we're going to build a network analysis stack with various open source Python ingredients. And so these ingredients are going to be the Nornir, the Napalm, the Pandas. We're also going to then use um, Netbox as a dynamic inventory for, uh, for Nornir as well. But we can talk about that in a bit. But what does this all mean? So this basically means that we're going to take this, uh, this data from various different vendors, which all have like, different, different structures, right? And we're going to unify, unify all of that data from these different vendors into this kind of this single agnostic format using the tools we're, we're dive into more as well. Um, and then once we've, got, once we've got that data back from all of these devices, so within our, our topology, our network, we've got uh, Nexus devices, we've got iOS devices, Junos, and EOS. So we've got lots of different um, output structures. We're going to get all of that data back. We're going to get that back through Napalm. We're going to get Nornir running that, um, that Napalm uh, layer, if you like. Once we've got that data, that collection process, we're going to pass the data over to Pandas, where we're going to um, get it into a data frame and do some analysis for it. And we can work with that data in, in, in various different ways. Um, so for example, you might want to kind of get the data out in different formats, JSON, Markdown, etc. All of that, all of that good stuff. But, but why, you know, it's great to be able to parse all the data in a, in a single unified format, which is going to be pandas. But this is going to allow us to, if you want to use it to find issues within your network, you can rep do reporting on it. If you want to convert it out into, into those different formats like Markdown, etc. But there's another really important feature of this, which is the next evolution of this framework which is the next evolution for this would be to run, have a runtime against the data that you've got from, from Pandas, so something like PyTest. Um, when you start to use PyTest and you start to work with a ton of different connections, you start to hit some of the caveats within PyTest around using it for network automation and network testing. Um, so by offloading, I'm a, abstracting, or would I say decoupling the, the collection process away from what you're doing in PyTest, and you just give PyTest a, a data frame to work with, you can then just use the features like the parameterization, et cetera, within, within a PyTest, and, and you're, going to be, you're going to be good to go, and you're not going to have to jump through a lot of the hoops and the things that you need to do within PyTest to kind of get it working with, with networks. But it's kind of a bit of a separate talk. But this is a... This is a good stack to, to get started with. Cool, so first of all, we're going to look at Napalm. And what Napalm is going to provide us with is it's going to provide us with that kind of, you could say a device driver, but it's going to provide us with that layer for the actual, the underlying, pulling that data from the network. Cool, so what is Napalm? So, Napalm is it's an abstraction layer, it's an abstraction tool, and what it does is it allows you to talk out to multiple different vendors, and you don't have to worry about the underlying device, you know, 
connect, um, libraries that you connect to the device. So whether you use NetMeco, PyE API, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just use a common set of methods within Napalm to be able to do things. So two of the main things that you can do with Napalm is one, you can do config operations. So the config operations, i.e. like replacing config, merging config, it's really good in Napalm. Uh, very mature, works great. I would say pretty much on par with, um, it's quite on par with what you can do with Scrapply, but I, I personally prefer, you get a, a few extra, extra features when, when you do it within Napalm. So it's, it's certainly good for the config op side, side of things. And also getters. So getters being, you can get information from your network. So your routes, your interface data, it's going to come back to you as structured data. But you're not going to have to worry under the hood whether you use a Genie template to parse the data, um, whether you use text FSM, et cetera, et cetera, what commands you, none of that. You're just going to do get routes or get interfaces. And the data that you're going to get back is going to be the same structured data pretty much most of the time. Every now and then there might be a few keys missing, a, little, a few things that are a bit different. But um, you're going to get that back as that same structured data. So what Napalm's going to do, we're going to use Napalm to go out to these, all of these different vendors, get the data back, and we're going to get that same structured data that we can then do, some, do something with, and in our case, place it into uh, pandas to do some analysis with it. Something else you can do with Napalm, you can also do compliance reporting, which you can then use these getters and run these getters against a, like a basically like a manifest to say how you want your network to look. Compliance, compliance reporting is not bad. It's, the output's a little bit nested, but um, it's, it's all right if you want to check that out. So can you guys see that? Or like, is that quite small or quite small? Um, OK, cool. Well, look what I'll do. Let's just come out of here. Zoom in. Is that any better? Yeah, cool. So, yeah, this, this has got a few extra little lines in it and stuff like that than the, what the slide is, but I wanted to kind of show you the so you can actually read it and stuff. So. Ultimately, what you do is to use Napalm, you just do pip install Napalm. And you do the, uh, the required import, which is uh, you, from Napalm import get network driver. And then all you need to do is you instantiate the, the network driver for your platform type. So in this case, I'm just going to run it against a, an Arista device. So I just set EOS. I set a... Um, my, my device details, so my host name, your username and password. And then all you do is you just use the Napalm Context Manager to create a connection to the device, and then we've got this Napalm connection. And now off this Napalm connection, you can then do all of the goodness, your config operations, run your getters, whatever it might be. And you can see that there, right? You've got napalmcon.getfax, get BGP neighbors, and if you want to do You've got all of the methods for your config ops as well. And so once you run that, let's. Cool. So run that because we haven't got the other slide. Cool. And then you're going to get back this structured data for those getters, right? All good? Yeah, right, great. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. And, you know, Napalm, the, the, those tools that I've, I'm going to show you, like Napalm, Nornir, and Pandas, they're amazing tools. So you can use them in their own right outside of this demo, right? So if you just want to do, use Napalm for your config ops, you could do, you don't have to use it in this stack. And likewise with the Pandas, you can use that on its, on its own as well. So, jump back into here.
So at this point, the world is good. We've gone out to device. We've got the structured data back, but there's a bit of an issue. How do you run it against multiple devices? Um, you, could loop through, you could loop through some devices. You could shove them into YAML and stuff, but it's going to be a bit of a pain. It's going to be slow. Or we need some concurrency. Well, this is where we need something. Well, we need a config management framework. We need something that's going to give us concurrency. We need something that's going to yeah, give us that ability to define an inventory. And this is where we're going to use Nornir. So Nornir is um, an open source framework for you know, config management mainly. It's community led, it's network focused, and you can automate groups of devices. It's kind of synonymous, it's slightly similar to Ansible. So the two kind of, uh, it's kind of like a bit of a versus debate. But the good thing about Nornir is it's built on Python, but you don't have to do all of the, all of the kind of the monkey dancing around you do with a DS, uh, DSL like you do with Ansible. If you want to do your nested loops and all of that, you just do it in Python. It's, it's easy. It's just, it's easy to work with. It's pluggable. It's really, really lean. So everything you want to do in Nornir, you provide in via, via plugins. And also, if you're just starting out with network automation, I highly recommend reading the, the GitHub repo for Nornir, because the code, I think, is personally the best code I've seen written, and it's a great learning resource. So it's going to give us that multi-threaded concurrency that we need to be able to run Napalm against all of these devices, because well, I say it's pluggable, we're going to plug in that, the, the Napalm plugger to be able to run Napalm against the, all of those devices that I showed you before. It gives you the inventory management, so you can go out to different uh, source of, sources of truth, like Netbox. It's fast. It's a lot faster than, than Ansible. And it's 100% Python, so you haven't got the DSL, and it's great for debugging. So you can use things like rich inspect. You can, yeah, it, it's just all of the Python things that you would typically use, like PDB, et cetera, you can use all of, all of those. Don't get me wrong, I quite like Ansible, but it is a bit slow, and it, it does get you a bit tied up when you want to do anything a little bit funky. So with Nornir, how am I doing for time? So with Nornir, what you do is you define the who, so your inventory, who you want to automate. You define the what, so what do you want to do to those devices. And then within that, uh, within that what, within that Nornir script, you just build tasks. Uh, and our tasks are literally just Python functions, and you run these tasks against the run on a per host basis. How do you run all of those tasks against all of the hosts? You literally just do an NR run, nor near run, just give it the task name, and you're going to get all of that information back. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's, there's a few things that I prefer Ansible for, like the, the output is going to be synchronous rather than um, asynchronous like you do with, uh, with Ansible, but yeah, it's a, good, it's a good tool. So this is how we are going to use it at this, this stage. So is that any, can you see that? Yes. So what we're going to do is to run Nornir, you create your Nornir script, but you also just give it a config file. And in your config file, you just give it the name of how you're going to use and work with your inventory. So we're going to use the Netbox inventory. Uh, in this case, you give it some, some parameters to go out to the, the Netbox API, etc. And then in this case, what we've done is we've created our Nornir uh, script, and we're just, we've installed the, the Napalm plugin, and we are going to just run this, uh, this Napalm uh, task plugin to be able to run our, our getters. Uh, and in, in this case, all I'm going to do is just go out to the network, get that data back, but not do anything with it yet, just get the data back, and then just write, write it to some, some files. Cool. So, so that's what we're going to do here. So, basically, just going to come out of this, and we're just going to run these getters against our network, 
And we're going to write them to some files. We're just going to manually close the, the connections, hit a few issues with the, um, the napalm connections being closed. And then that's going to be the next stage of our stack. Cool. So that has gone out. So at the moment, what we've done, so we've, we've gone out to Netbox, which is hosted in the US, the Netbox cloud. I've got a data center in Germany with the devices running, and we're pulling all of that here, just, just here, over uh, using zero tier. So now I've run that, I've got all of that output. And I've got all of these files. of just the data, okay? So I've not, you know, they're not, that's not JSON, that's just dictionary, so I've just, I've just put that in there like so, and then we've got all that structured data. So, you know, what I wanna do here with this talk is I don't wanna just kind of give a talk and you guys go, oh, this is cool. I want to give you guys each component and, and the code to be able to kind of take this away and to be able to kind of get going with, with some automation. So everything I'm showing you today is in, in a code repo, and so I'm gonna be sharing that out afterwards. I'll give you a QR code so you can, you can join that. But that's, that's where we're going with things, right? So if, you, if you're like, well, I like that talk, but actually I only wanna do Napalm for, for part of it, or I wanna just use Pandas for so convert, doing some things and converting some, uh, some files, then you can just use and choose what you wanna do with it and, um, and basically play around with it on your own, uh, within your own lab. Cool, so we've got the data, that's all good, but so like, what, what next? Well, the next thing is that we wanna be able to get it into a format that we can, we can work with, that we can have some kind of easy to use, I would say like methods and et cetera, and different things, that, ways that we can work with the data without having to you know, monkey dance, going through like loops and picking out keys and all of those horrible things that you have to kind of mess around with when you're working with, um, working with dictionaries and data within, within Python. And this is where Pandas comes in. So, you know, Jason talked a lot about, you know, data, workflows, and, you know, data is really, really key. And one of the tools that is a, it's a really great tool to be able to work with this data, and that is Pandas. So what is Pandas? So Pandas is a Python library um, for, it's been used a lot within the data science field. And we're starting to see it more and more within the, the network domain because, you know, like data science, we've got a ton of data that we need to work with, and we need to work with it in, in an easy to use way. And so we're already seeing um, pandas being used within tools like Suzy Q and Batfish, where they return to you a lot of data. You need to, you need to work with that, you need to analyze it. And so, so it's a first class citizen within, within those tools. And so what Pandas is, is it provides you with various tools for data exploration, um, a couple of different data formats, but there's mainly well, a couple of different data structures, but there's one that we're gonna, we're gonna focus in on today, and which is the, the Pandas data frame. So the Pandas data frame data structure consists of rows, columns, very similar to a spreadsheet, if you like, um, but it's much, much easier to work with in a programmatic way. So it's like having, it's like having a spreadsheet within Python you, that you can just work with, and you can just do everything that you can, can do like within a spreadsheet, but using Python methods and, uh, and attributes. So it gives you an extensive range of filtering, merging, data processing methods. What you can do with Pandas is, um, is, is really quite astonishing. It's, there's so much you can do with it. The other thing that you can do, other than you know, analyzing your data, is it's great for converting between formats. So 
It's got great support, so if you want to convert your data into, so I've got the, you know, I've got a data frame there on the right-hand side. I've got my columns, I've got my rows, I've got my data. If you've got spreadsheets, like everyone's got spreadsheets within their network, and I know everyone's going on, everyone wants, you know, CI/CD. They want Net DevOps, but it's cool. Like if you've got spreadsheets, all that means is that you've just got, you, you know, you've got these items of record within your within your organisation. You can, you can work with that data using pandas. You don't have to build a full workflow. You don't have to you know, chase that, that unicorn. You can just you know, do a small bit of automation just with, with pandas. And so where I'm going with that is that you can convert data from spreadsheets, CSV, even a, a, an SQL database, JSON, dictionaries, even a HTML table. So wherever you've got your data, you can convert that in so you can really do, like, if you want to and you're starting out, you can do small pockets of automation. If you've got a spreadsheet, convert that into a data frame and then you could just... It might be that you've got a data frame and you might have uh, end of life of data in it for all your devices. Convert it into a uh, data frame, loop over the data, and then you can just send, like, say, an API or an, an email to your, your um, procurement teams, for example. Just, you know, just small, small wins. It doesn't have to be this huge, you know, CI, CD, uh, pipelines, etc. So that's you know that's the thing with pandas. There's a there's a lot you can do with it. So that might be quite small as well. Can you guys just about read that? Because I can I can jump into the terminal as well. But so ultimately, I can jump into the terminal in a bit. So it's it's, it's okay. But when you work with pandas, there's three things to think of, right? First of all, you want to import the data. Well, I've spoken a bit about that. You, can, you analyze the data, and then you can export the data. And each of those, there's a whole range of different options and things that you can, you can do. So, you know, here, to use pandas, you just do pip install pandas. And in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a simple dictionary, which has just got some, uh, some keys and some lists, and then it's gonna, we're going to convert that. We're going to use a pd.dataframe from, and we're going to use dot from dict to read that data in, and we're going to get a data frame. Even at this stage, when you import the data, there's, there's tons of different options. For example, you can read in from JSON, but also you're not always going to have like, easy to read JSON because you might have, it might be nested. So there's a method here, which is um, JSON normalize. And what you do is it allows you to work and bring in to a data frame nested data. So you can go inside the nested data within the, um, sorry, go within the, uh, the JSON into the nested JSON, pick out the data you want, create a data frame, but also you can then pick out some different parent objects. So that's what uh, I would highly recommend if you're kind of working with um, with nested data, but you can choose what you want to what you want to import it from. You, we've got read CSV, we've got read JSON, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use we're going to read from we're going to use the dot from dict to take the data from what we get from Napalm and place that into a, a data frame. And you can see like a little example of the data frame there. So that's okay. When it comes to analysis with, uh, with pandas, there's, there's a lot you can do, and I'm wondering whether to go into the, the terminal. So I should have some time. So that should be fine. So I'll jump into the terminal, but what I'll say is, when, if you've worked with tools like Batfish and you've worked with tools like SuseQ, especially Batfish, you can do some things in Batfish, and you think, well, that seems like magic. Like, if you've used the compare filters within Batfish, it's amazing. Like, it's truly crazy how you can just completely compare two sets of, of ACLs in the way that it does. But the more that you work with these tools, the more that you realize, actually, behind the scenes, what they're using is pandas. And so, with pandas, yes, I mean, you can, you can do summarizations, aggregate data, count different columns, remove columns, you can do queries, etc. all of that, but you can also do things in terms of diffing. So say you want to get two routing tables, 
you can get two routing tables, place them within two data frames, and then you can then do, um, I think it's the merge operation, and it basically does uh, diffing between the two, and you can, you've got complete customization on how that diff looks. So you've now got a way of not only for querying the data, but then diffing data within, within your network in a really nice way, because we're able to get the data in, in this uh, kind of normalized, standardized format, and we can, we can do that, so that's great. We can also output that into various different formats, so we can do it to Excel, to Markdown. You can even do it to uh, HTML, so you can create like HTML tables. So again, let's say you had a, let's say you had an Excel spreadsheet. You could just use Pandas just for converting it into a HTML report. You don't necessarily need to do anything else. You could just with you know three lines of code. So you can convert that into those different formats. So, and that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to use that data that we're getting from Napalm. We're going to place it within some data frames. We're going to concatenate all of those data frames, create one large data frame, filter through the data frame, and then output the issues as an Excel spreadsheet. All good? Any questions or so far? Everyone happy? Great. So, before we go into that, let me just jump into, back into the code. So, we will jump into here, and this is what I just showed you a minute ago. I'll jump into IPython. So, if you're just starting out with Python, um, IPython's really good. It's much better than the normal interpreter. And also, if you just do dash i, it drops you into the interpreter afterwards, and you get all the variables, so it's quite good to work with when you're just kind of trying out your, uh, your scripts. Cool, so at this point, what I've done is I've imported this data into a data frame, and we're, we're off to the races. So this is, so this is our data frame, so it's quite simple. In the real world, it's going to be thousands and thousands of lines, etc., or, or rows, should I say. So I'm just going to kind of step through a couple of the common things that you might want to do with a data frame. So when you're working, say, in the real world, and you've got loads and loads of columns, right? What, back, what Pandas is going to do is going to truncate them. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to see what all of those different columns are. So you can use iLock for that. And what iLock is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to show a row, but in a vertical-based manner. So here, it's so the same data, just for what we're seeing for a row, but it's just a vertical-based uh, manner. So as you're kind of importing in tons and tons of different columns, that's what you're going to want to, going to, want to do to, to avoid that truncation. So you've got iLock. So iLock is a common thing that we, we use. We can group by different columns as well, and then we can count those columns. So in this case, it's, it's simple, but you know, if we've got multiple different versions, etc., you can count them and you can create yourself a nice little report, right? Because you can output that to a HTML table, now you've got a really easy way to be able to go out to the network and then do some really nice reporting, how many, how many different um, NOS versions I've got in my network, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the other things that we can do is a common thing is using the query method. And you just do dot .query, and you just give it the, the column that you want to query and what you want to or query against, i.e., do you want to query against show me everything where the columns of a given string or you can then do different, you know, greater than, less than. You can then pipe this into um, ands, which is what I've got here. So you can query your data down, and you can, you know, you can find exactly get from this uh, this data exactly what you need. Then we can export it out into these different formats. So, like to Excel, Markdown, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
at this point, I'm not going to rerun that. I'm just going to show you. So we've got this data. Right, it's, it's, you know, there's not much to it, really, at the moment. We've got the output data, and we've got this out like so. Uh, and the, the other good thing to mention as well, when it comes to the HTML outputs, it's going to give you the ability to inject in different um, HTML, CSS classes, etc. So you don't have to go through the hassle of like trying to inject. Say, if you're using like a, a CSS styling, um, a CSS styling framework, then you can um, you can just inject that in, and you don't have to start messing around with like kind of injecting in text and stuff like that. So, key point with that as well is pandas is really, really mature. So, if you want to do something with pandas, nine times out of ten that you can already do it. Good stuff. Right. So, that is pandas. So, we can now bring everything together. I won't bother putting that up on a full screen just yet. So I come out of here, um, and what I'm, I'm, I'm going to quickly show you this because I think we've got time, so it's okay. So I'm going to go off on a slight tangent now because I think this is a really good tool. If you get a chance and you want to look and you want to learn Python to a really, really good level, the trick is, is to go inside the objects, because when you're working with Python, you're only kind of looking at the surface. You're seeing the, you know, what the object names are. If you're lucky, you might get a little bit of information from VS Code through IntelliSense. But what Inspect does is it allows you to look inside the objects, and it gives you the output in a really nice way. Right? You can do that in Python normally just using like dunder dick dunder to look at the, the different attributes of uh, objects, or you can use a DIR to look at the methods. But Inspect for me has been really like my game-changing moment because I can use the code as my form of documentation on how to learn um, Python to a good level. And when people ask me things about these different tools like Nornir, I typically just go inside the objects and to get the answers. It's always up to date and it just it, it helps your learning. So for example, you just do you install Rich, so you do uh, Rich as a separate project. You do uh, rich uh, pip install rich, and then you just import it there like so, and then you just do an inspect. You inspect your object in, in terms of, uh, in this case, we're just going to inspect the, the DF, the data frame. And by default, it's only going to show you the attributes. So what we're going to get back from here it's going to get back, these are the attributes, right? Attributes of the object. Attributes being the things that the object is, right? Just the, the kind of the, the characteristics, not things that it can do, right? That's the methods. To see the methods, you type in methods true. And now we're going to get all the methods. Now we can see against this data frame everything that we can do to it without going online and then clicking through all of the different pages of the documentation. So now we can see we can convert it to pickle, to records, to, to SQL, to JSON. It's got all of the different methods in there. We can go through this. And, and to be honest, sometimes I go through objects and I find little kind of gems, things that you can kind of, maybe I just need to get out more, but things that you can, you can do with these objects in Python that isn't documented. So, yeah, this is really the, if you want to learn Python, this is a really good way to, way to go. So at this point, I'm going to quickly run the last demo, which is tying everything together, which is in this end-to-end -end script. I've got my task within Nornir, where I'm just going to run my napalm getter. I'm going to do some stuff and coerce the data frame a little bit to make it nice. Place that within the, um, in within the result structure of Nornir. And then once Nornir has finished running, I'm going to uh, loop over that result structure, get all of those data frames back for each of the hosts, append them to a mega data frame, and then 
I'm going to then work against that megadata frame and convert the query to find just the errors on some interfaces, and then output that to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so. So it's converted all the results to Pandas data frame for each of the hosts, and then right at the end, it's going to do what's needed to get that into that mega data frame. If we look at that data frame here, I've got all of those, uh, I've got all of those, uh, all of that data from those interfaces from all of the devices in the lab. I can now work with all of that data in a nice, easy way. I've got the truncation going on there, so I can just use my iLock. And this is all of the data from a given row. And now I can do what I need to do. I can get it out into different reports. I can query it, et cetera. And as I mentioned before, the next evolution to this is to then pass this data frame over to a framework like PyTest. And then you can work against it. And you've got a, a runtime, a framework that you can use to, um, to test your, your network. Now, as I mentioned, so all of this code I'll share out. Just jump back into here. And that concludes the, the talk on how to build a network analysis stack. If there's a QR code there, and you can jump onto the newsletter and I'll email out the, the repo, or just follow me on Twitter. And yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone, and thanks for listening. Awesome, thanks, Rick. Thanks. Uh, we do have time for a couple of questions, and then you can get your blood sugar. So I've seen the snacks; they look fancy. One straight here. Hi, thanks, Rick. Um, I've enjoyed enjoyed these talks. I noticed a couple of them are kind of am I audible? A couple of them are very much sort of left to right. They don't have a closed loop back to the inventory. And do we have a solution for that, apart from maybe Ansible, to, to get what we've learned from the network back to Netbox? Um, I, I don't know if you'd really, I, personally, I don't think I'd really want to. I'd, I'd want to kind of, unless I was kind of syncing, if you did want to sync like your environment to Netbox, which would or Nautobot or whatever, that's kind of going to be a bit more of a one-off thing, but I'd, I'd want to keep that source of truth there and pull from the source of truth and keep that, that flow going down into the tools rather than trying to push it back up, up the stack. And what about reconciling the source data and then what you pulled off the network using maybe, um, well, any of those tools you showed? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, if you, as and when you do need to do it, you could kind of... You could use tools like, um, like something like Suzy Q. There's, there's things that you could do. You could, you could ro roll your own. So you could use Nornir. I've done it before. Use Nornir, go out to the network, collect some data, and then use something like PyNetbox to update Netbox. I know um, also Nautobot, they've got various tools to allow you to synchronize that data back up to, um, up to the system. But um, or an, an, another good way, I would say, is you've got tools like SUSEQ, and SUSEQ is really, really good in terms of it's going to go out and get all of the state and do all of the normalization for you. So you're going to get all of the CDP, all of, the, all of that data. You could then easily then just place that against uh, something like PyNetbox and then synchronize, synchronize that up to, uh, to Netbox if you wanted to. Can you show us the spreadsheet as well, the output? Uh, sorry? From the example, can you show us the spreadsheet? Um, yeah, ah, oh, did I not? Yeah. Yeah, good shout. There we go. Getting called out. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, eh? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the so, yeah, there's a, that's the spreadsheet of all the errors. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of interface errors. This is my lab, and I kind of purposely don't fix the errors because it makes it quite nice when I'm trying to 
show demos, but it has got to the point where it's got a bit crazy. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. All right, we have time for one more super quick question and answer. And then the cake time. So you told us that you're using Napalm to get uh, data from the devices. But uh, do you have any idea how to get data from devices that are not supported by Napalm yet? Do you have an idea for that? Yeah, so I mean, you could swap out. So you could swap out Napalm for... You could use, if you wanted to, you could, you could put in something like, well, not eAPI because Arist is supported by uh, Napalm, but yeah, if you had a funky device, you could use something like NetMeco. Um, so that's, again, that's CLI scraping. You could, if the device is not supported by, um, by Napalm, you could just place, and they support an API, you could just write, a, you pull it from the API just using a, a non-air task. Um, and just bring that in. So yeah, just uh, just read that JSON in, and then just import that into a data frame. But if you wanted to get yeah a quick win, I'd probably say look at NetMeco because I mean that that supports like 105 devices or something. So normally you you should be covered. So so yeah. Thanks. All right, that's all we've got time for. Let's have another round of applause for Rick Nato, please. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>